Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of Negroes and Negroland, a reply, part 2. Important notice, it is not our intention to offend anyone with this video. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. The goal of this video is for you to look for the books journals, magazines, or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, a lie told often enough appears to be true. Here is our challenge to you. Please separate what the books, journals, and historical facts are saying from our individual opinions. If we produce the source and show you the source, we expect you to also do the same. If you cannot sell your child, husband or wife today, why do you believe that your parents and grandparents could have? Don't defend any lie without providing us with a source that predates at least 1950, the same way we are doing. Here is a little example of what we mean by defending lies. A viewer claimed that an African king called Matthew Kereku has apologized for the slave trade and that is her proof that it was Africans that sold other Africans. So but the Matthew Kereku was actually born circa 1933 but the slave trade started circa 1434 and stopped circa 1900. So how could someone born after the slave trade be apologizing for the slave trade? Note that his apology is purely based on a lie told often enough and that lie is that Negroes sold themselves or that Africans sold other Africans. So we will challenge you instead of defending lies like this, we suggest you also produce books or documents that show where the lie you are defending is written so that we can at least believe you instead of just reproducing what you had somewhere. Thank you. This video is a response to a YouTube video on cannibalism in Negroland, Path 2. The title of the video is Negroes in Negroland by Amanda Evans and published March 21st, 2015, alleging that Negroes were cannibals. Here is how we will proceed. We will reproduce relevant portion of the said video for this path and then we produce the book containing the false information in the video. We then apply common sense to the narrative now that it is common knowledge that Negroes are fully humans. We will then reference sources from authors who were not part of the slave raids or razias. Remember, in all that we do, we must remember that not all Europeans, not all Arabs, not all Fulanese, not all Babas, not all Tuaregs were slave hunters and slave raiders. There were some good-hearted ones. We have to remember the likes of David Livingstone, the likes of Cardinal Lavigiri, the likes of Abraham Lincoln, and all the other people that fought desperately to ensure that the slave trade was stopped. So if in all we do, let us not tar all Europeans or all Asians or all Arabs or all Muslims or all Christians with the same brush. Even though these were done by them, we have to separate the good-natured ones from the evil ones. Recall that in part 1, we examined the allegation that some Negro or Negroid groups called Yam Yams ate human flesh. We produced the source of that information including the context. We will again examine another lie from the video based on the same book called Negroes in Negroland published in 1868. Here are some important timelines. The book was originally published in 1866. The second book upon which the video of 2015 is based was published in 1868 that's just about two years after the original source was published then the video was made in 2015 here is a quote from the video maker he said the book was produced in 1868 
and the truths spoken about these darkest of races remain the same to this very day. Now, 1866 to 2015 is 149 years. Now, remember, the author of this video is telling us that as at 2015, the truths spoken about this darkest of races remain the same to this very day. And the reason they are saying it is because of the actions of people who are not Negroes. So, like the slave trade where the Europeans, the Arabs, the Barbers, the Tuaregs were capturing and selling the Negroes and turned around to say the Negroes sold themselves. They are still doing the same till today because if you noticed, the weapons being used by those massacring and killing people in Sub-Saharan Africa are made by the Europeans and Americans. The weapons are being used by Arabs, the Fulanis, the Barbers and the Tuaregs against the Negroes. But yet, they are the Negroes are being classified as bad because of the appellation of African. If you check this, if you apply very basic common sense, you will see that the author wasn't and couldn't have been referring to the Arabs. He couldn't have been referring to the non-Negroes. But still, it is the non-Negroes that are carrying out the atrocities for which he is referring to the Negroes as this darkest of races. So we have to make every effort to debunk these lies. You will also notice that the Fulanese did not swarm the page the way they swarmed ours to debunk whatever they are saying because they understand that this video is subliminally pointing at the Negroes and they all understand what they are doing. Let us move forward. Here is a comment of interest in the video and it says, These readings are actual descriptions by the people who witnessed these events and then wrote about them. Can you provide evidence, in bracket, eyewitness testimony that Northern Europeans engaged in such widespread barbarity and cannibalism? Also, are you aware that they are still eating each other in Africa? Furthermore, just saying that others have done bad things does not negate the truth of these readings and its impact on understanding the Negro's actions in modern society. Notice that the Negro has come in. This separates the Negro from the Arab, from the Barbers, from the Tuaregs, from the Fulanese. But yet, the atrocities are being carried out by the Fulanese and the Arabs and the Tuaregs while using weapons made by the Europeans. So you see how the same thing plays out here today. That is why they say the best place to hide something is in plain sight. You see the same slave trade replaying in your very eyes. Let us proceed by referencing the book called The Albert Nyanza Great Basin of the Nile and Explorations of the Nile Sources by Samuel White Baker and it was published in 1866 and this is volume 1. The video in focus follows immediately. Many of Ibrahim's party had been frequent witnesses to acts of cannibalism during their residence among the Makarikas. They described these cannibals as remarkably good people, but possessing a peculiar taste for dogs and human flesh. They accompanied the trading party in their razias and invariably ate the bodies of the slain. The traders complained that they were bad associates, as they insisted upon killing and eating the children which the party wished to secure as slaves. Their custom was to catch a child by its ankles and to dash its head against the ground. Thus killed, they opened the abdomen, extracted the stomach and intestines, and tying the two ankles to the neck, they carried the body by slinging over the shoulder and thus returned to camp, where they divided it by quartering and boiling it in a large pot. One of the slave girls attempted to escape, and her proprietor immediately fired at her with his musket, and she fell wounded. The ball had stuck her in the side. The girl was remarkably fat, and from the wound a large lump of yellow fat exuded. No sooner had she fallen than the Makarikas rushed upon her in a crowd, and seizing the fat, they tore it from the wound in handfuls, the girl still being alive, while the crowd were quarrelling for the disgusting prize. Others killed her with a lance, and at once divided her, 
by cutting off the head and splitting the body with their lances, used as knives, cutting longitudinally between the legs along the spine up to the neck. And that's from Baker's Great Basin of the Nile, page 201. So we're simply going to use the portion where he says, they accompanied the trading party in their razzias and invariably ate the bodies of the slain to debunk the whole thing. So reading for that, it says, the traders complained that they were bad associates as they insisted upon killing and eating the children which the party wished to secure as slaves. Their custom was to catch a child by its ankle and to dash its head against the ground. Thus killed, they opened the abdomen, extracted the stomach and intestines and tying the two ankles to the neck, they carried the body by slinging it over the shoulder. So at least you see clearly that with the type of teeth the, the Negroes have today, they are the same people we know. Their teeth is human teeth. It's almost impossible if you look at the account and how they are going to slit the abdomen open and abstract the stomach and all that. Secondly, how many people are going to eat how many human beings? So you see, these were lies and propaganda and takia that they used at that time to demonize the Negroes and justify the slave trade. So the easiest way to show you that this is a complete lie is to show you what a slave raid looked like or a razia. Razia is just slave raid. The reason they started telling you that they made wars is to change the narrative and to deceive everybody. Let us reference a book that gives us an account of a slave raid so that you can look at it and tell us what criteria they used to take some people on a slave raid and then argue with them on whether or not to capture the children and whether or not they will eat them. This will tell you who is lying. Let us reference a book called The History of a Slave by H.H. H. Johnston and it was published in 1889. So remember, it is an account of a slave captured in a Fulani slave raid. And he gave this narrative of how it all happened. So this account will tell you exactly that this previous book is a big lie. So here we see how the people lived in fear and sent spies to keep an eye on when the Fulanis, who were then classified as Arabs or white people, were advancing so they were supposed to raise an alarm so people can escape because they had no weapons whereas the europeans had equipped the arabs and the fulanese and tuaregs and barbers with weapons our guns firearms which the negroes didn't have so they had only bows and arrows so you understand that every lie you see them telling about the negroes is usually about themselves so reading from the highlighted portion it says the women and children were all sent to bakuba as being a place more easy to defend and women remained behind in the town sending our spies out into the forest and onto the hills in, our, in all directions to keep us appraised of the advance of the Fubi. That's Fubi is Fulani and they were then Arabs. So just you can read the same statement as the advance of the Arabs. But we had begun our precautions too late. The women who feared to start at night on account of the wild beasts and ghosts of which these pagans are always afraid left the village to escape to Bakuba just before the dawn. But before the sun was up, they came running back into the town, shrieking out that the men riding on horses were upon us. And then our scouts came in one after the other, some wounded with the enemy's bullets, and all said, The Bathibari are here. There is no time to escape, and all was hubbub and confusion. Some went and hid themselves. Some began to load their guns and get ready their spears and arrows. Others cut down branches from the trees and tried to block the doorways of the different compounds. So again, you see that the Negroes were powerless. The dang guns they had, you will need to load and you will only shoot once. So we are going to read further to show you exactly what a slave raid or razia looked like. So from the opposite page, we see in the middle of all this turmoil, we heard suddenly the firing of guns and distant shouting of Allah Akbar, the war cry of the Fubi, and Fubi you know is Fulani. And then as it were, all at once, the town was full of Mohammedans, some on foot and some crashing through the plantain 
plantations on horseback and our people ran hither and thither like frightened sheep but there was no escape for the fooby had surrounded the town and any who tried to slip past the enemy into the bush was shot down six of the fooby with guns and cutlasses came into my compound and i was afraid to resist them for i saw it was useless to fight against them so this is all we need now from the account of the guy who said they follow the slave raids to go and um, eat the people that they kill first you note that it means they know they kill people in the slave raid one they are accusing someone else two we will show you what they do to people when they go to slave raids so here from the same incident of a slave raid by the Fulbi or fulani who were then classified as arabs we see Fulbi that were standing guard over us. I could not understand what they were saying because they spoke in their own language, which I did not then know. But it appeared, as I afterwards learned, that some of our people who at the first alarm had escaped into the bush had set on two of the Fubi whom they had found separated from their companions and looting some plantations and had killed them and this aroused the wrath of the other Fulbi to such an extent that we feared they would kill us all. They captured most of the runaway party who had been concerned in the death of their brothers and brought them into the open place where we were lying chained. Not a few of these runaways were poor women and little children who could not have had anything to do with the death of the two Fulbi soldiers, but nevertheless, on them as well as their husbands and brothers, the Mohammedans wrecked, wrecked their anger. They tied the men to stakes and tree trunks and lopped their limbs off one by one and then beheaded them. They ripped up the women and lifting up the children by the feet, they swung them round and dashed out their brains on the stone seats. Now we are going to compare this account of a Fulbi slave raid with what they were saying about the negroes now you see how they make the victims demonize them in such a way that you start saying things that you couldn't have ordinarily said if you knew the truth so if we looked at the book that the person that made this video based her or his account or narrative on we see that the account as at 1866 was still a lie you notice that he told us that the people that were eating the human flesh or cannibals accompanied the trading party in their razias. Razias is slave raid. You have seen what a slave raid looks like. Does it look like something anybody could accompany another to without arms? The answer is no. We showed you where they killed the two Fulbi soldiers. Remember, the two Fulbi soldiers those soldiers you see that are conducting that were conducting the raids are the armies in sub-saharan africa today so whoever you see on military uniform in sub-saharan africa is actually the same army that they used to capture and sell the negroes as slaves at that time so now you notice that when they discovered that one or two of their own were killed they were killing both the women and children which is exactly what you see in sub-saharan africa till today that's what the army will do. If you doubt, all you need to do, do a little googling. You'll see what we're telling you. So now, you notice that there is no way anyone could have followed them because the slave raids were conducted early in the morning. They take the villagers on ours. So the villagers had no strength to defend themselves. So the best they could do is to know in ahead or in advance that the Fulanese or Arabs were coming so they could run away. But the Arabs will surround the community, set their houses on fire, and then that's what you see. They capture everybody they could. That's how the slave trades were done. Remember, if it was one person selling one or two people, there is no way you can be counting in millions. There is no way you can be talking about thousands of slaves. It's impossible. No matter how stupid you think the Negroes could have been, at least an account like this should tell you that the slave master is a liar. Remember, if the slave master wasn't a liar, they would have been honest enough to at least own up to their atrocities. But this is not the case. 
So now that you have seen what a slave raid looked like, even if you are still struggling to understand that the account of 1866 must be a very big lie, let us reference a book we used to debunk the lie in part 1 of this series. Remember, the person that made this video reproduced what they had said in 1866. But what we did was we looked back beyond where the person that made the video started to see where it all started and provide a context which showed that it was mere hearsay. But let us reference the same book we used and the same book the person that made the video used to show you how mischievous the Europeans and the slave masters can be. From the same book, and it's called Travels and Discoveries in Northern and Central Africa in 1822, 1823, and 1824 by Major Denham, Captain Clapperton, and the late Dr. Odney, Volume 4, and it was published in 1831, we see the following. So here we see, starting from around the top of the page, after the semicolon, it says that the water falls down with great rapidity from the rocks, and that the white men, in attempting to get on shore, were drowned, that crowds of people went to look at them, but the white men did not shoot at them as I had heard, that the natives were too much frightened either to shoot at them or to assist them, that there were found a great many things in the boat, books and riches, with which the Sultan of Busa has got that beef cut in slices and salted was in the great plenty in the boat, that the people of Bursa, who had eaten of it, all died because it was human flesh, and that they knew we white men eat human flesh. I was indebted to the messenger of Yaro for a defense, who told the narrator that I was much more nice in my eating than his countrymen were, but it was with some difficulty I could persuade him that if his story was true, it was the people's own fears that had killed them, that the meat was good beef or mutton, that I had eaten more goat's flesh since I had been in this country than ever I had done in my life, that in England we eat nothing but fowls, beef and mutton. At this place, Clapperton had nearly, though innocently, got into a scrape with the old governor by coquetting with a young and buxom widow. So without digressing, but below the highlighted portion, we see where it says, I had a visit amongst the number from the daughter of an Arab who is very fair, calls herself a white woman, is rich, a widow, and wants a white husband. She is said to be the richest person in Wawa, having the best house in the town and a thousand slaves. So now you see what they did was like the oil companies today because which is uh, exactly what the slave trade was like. The Arabs, the Europeans, the Fulanis and other non-Negroes set up camps from where they conducted slave raids exactly like the oil companies today. The same thing they are doing. Remember they say if you want to hide something, the best place to hide it is in plain sight. The slave trade is still going on but subliminally. So now you see, it tells you that they are Arabs. Now when you look at it, having a thousand slaves, they will change the narrative to something like Africans were enslaving other Africans. That is how they created the enemy within. So from within the Negroes, they perpetuate their evil and then come out with their takia and propaganda to deceive the whole world. So now back to the topic of cannibalism, you see from the highlighted portion that the European gave meat to some people there or they got meat that was supposedly beef but all the people that ate it died and now the people already believe that it was human flesh because that's the only reason they died. If the people were um, cannibals and ate human flesh why will they believe that the reason those that ate the meat died was because it was human flesh now notice that they also believed that the white people were cannibals too but you see how smart the person uh, that made the video is and how the slave master is a, a great liar a liar with distinction you see that when he comes up on his side he asks you for proof 
But when he hears it about the Negro concocted by him, he now starts saying it is true. That's the power of propaganda and takia in Islam. You see what we mean from the comments in the video. So we remember this comment from a user on the video in question that says these readings are actual descriptions by the people who witnessed these events and then wrote about them. Can you provide evidence, eyewitness testimony in bracket that Northern Europeans engaged in such widespread barbarity and cannibalism? Also, are you aware that they are still eating each other in Africa? So now you see the power of their propaganda. In the same book where they got that the Negroes were eating people, there is also an account of where people ate meat, supposedly given to them by a slave master who was an European. And they all died and the people believed that it must be human meat because at that time they also believed that the slave master eats human flesh and that was the reason they were capturing them as slaves. So now, he didn't see that one. He only saw the ones that had no proof, no eyewitness whatsoever. Just that someone out of mischief and pure man sin humanity to man went to take lies which they used to justify the slave trade at that time and reproduce them in 2015 as proof. But now when it comes to the fact that the Negroes also believed that the Europeans and the slave master was a cannibal. He is now asking for not just evidence but eyewitness testimony. Imagine asking for eyewitness testimony in 2015 when you know that no one born more than 100 years prior would still be alive. So again, you see how treacherous the slave master is and the power of their propaganda and takia. We are going to reference one or two other materials before we round up. So let us look at modern day iteration of the slave master's lies. Now the reason you need to understand this very well is that when the Bible said the serpent was the most subtle of all the beasts created, just note that the slave master is that serpent, very subtle. So let us look at the news report that at that time claimed that a restaurant in Nigeria was closed down for serving human meat. So it was reported by the BBC. So here we see the apology they issued. Remember, the reason they issued an apology was the moment they published that news, a Negro was still in power at that time. So some people made moves to find out where it happened and it, it happened to be a lie. That was why they issued the apology. So to see how subtle the slave master really is, you will notice that they published it in Swahili pages. So this will send the message to the other people and leave the people that are the victims of the publication outside the scope of the reach, kind of. So now, look at their, what they said. We apologize for the information we published here on a Nigerian restaurant. The information was incorrect and published without the BBC's order. We have removed the information online and have already begun investigations to prove what led to such a statement published. Now, they said it wasn't with the BBC order. Who else can publish things on BBC website? Was it on a blog that you say, oh, somebody came in there and put it? Was it even in Wikipedia that you say, oh, somebody came in and put it and we've removed it? So you see their game. The only reason they apologized was because they were caught red-handed. But now, where is the investigation they did? The highest they could do would be to fire one person, but the damage has already been done. That is the slave master's game. If you were to go to the BBC house in London, look around on the floor, you will see all the nations they have used their propaganda to conquer. That's exactly what they do. Now, if you doubt what we're saying, there is this coding nonsense going on in Nigeria. It was also started by the BBC. So if you watch their documentary on that coding, you will discover that it's also a lie. If you doubt what we're saying, all you need to do is ask them to take you to one of those mental homes they presented there. The only reason they're getting away with it is because they installed the lucky you have as Nigerian president today. That's the only reason. Otherwise, if you had a little money and you could do basic research or investigative journalism, all you need to do is just go to the hinterland 
or wherever they said they found that um um uh, whatever the mental home is and go and dig deep you will discover that the people there have nothing to do with codeine but because the slave master is as subtle as subtle as the biblical serpent they are able to pull it through because of the cooperation of the Fulanese who are their stooges and lackeys in that place the same way they did the slave trade so now let us see the effect of these publication before we round up so here you see the telegraph correcting their own too because they said an article of may 16 reported that a restaurant in nigeria had been shut down because it was serving human flesh it was based on details given in a bbc swahili article bbc swahili has now confirmed the story is incorrect but unfortunately the damage has already been done this is what they do this is all what they do all the news you hear about sub-saharan africa from the bbc voa al jazeera 98.99 percent of them are lies and they are present even when they appear to be true they are lies you remember the last fulani uh massacre of people in benue they presented it as communal clashes which we all know is a lie so you see who they are that's who they are so when you listen to them you have to listen to them with a pinch of salt you have to listen to them and understand that you are listening to liars so now we see the same propaganda in metro and they see well, whether they, or not they issued an apology was it not the same thing they did to equiano Lord when he published his um, narrative all the newspapers went into overdrive to say he was no longer born in africa you need to start asking for every news you hear from the bbc as far as it concerns sub-saharan africa your question should be why are they telling you and then you look at the alternative narrative for example if they claim that it was codeine addiction that is creating the problem they have any responsible person any responsible government would rather address why the people are addicted to the codeine rather than going to close a pharmaceutical which we know is the target of the british so what they do is that they tell their lackeys that we will issue this documentary which if you were to go watch the documentary with some level of objectivity with some level of uh, free mind not a slave mind that you are listening to uh, someone that could ever say the truth you will see the loopholes you will see that where they are presenting is totally different from where the even the product is being sold but unfortunately they have the higher ground they understand propaganda and lies and remember these are innocent people who do not even know why they are being hated by the british so now all they do is they are going to create a situation where they will use the same slave raiding army which you call nigerian army and invade the place or start killing people you will blend the people but you won't know that it is still the same ma slave master doing his thing so you see this is why we tell you that the slave master is a liar if they are doing all this today that information is everywhere imagine what they could have done at a time when people were listening to them as the truth or source of truth or source of information this should tell you what they are doing remember they know when to present it they don't just bring it out they can be telling you sweet things to buy your confidence and belief in them so that they will strike at the time you have started believing and trusting them that's who they are let us round up by looking at the same account reproduced by the video of 2015 for which we are making this video we see and remember where he told us that one of the slave girls attempted to escape and her proprietor immediately fired at her with his musket and she fell wounded the ball had struck her in the side the girl was re remarkably fat and from the wound a large lump of yellow fat exuded now remember no matter how fat the person is try to imagine how possible this is today just try to remember if you have looked at the bbc uh, human meat um report that should tell you who they are and what they are doing the slave master is a liar now try to imagine how somebody sat down came up with that story published it 
other news media reported it, they kept quiet until somebody from the Nigerian government at that time, because a Negro was in power. It was why you started hearing how corruption, 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 corruption was all over the place because they were not able to do what they know how to do with their lackeys who are the Fulanese, which you can go and read. If you go and read the books referenced earlier in our, some of our series, you will see where they wrote it clearly that they ruled through the Fulanese. So they were not able to do that. So it's the same way you will see that when you hear some things like Biafra agitation and they go and shoot them. It is not the Fulani because the Fulani, like the Arabs, they are. They do not make or manufacture weapons. You can't tell us anywhere in the world where you have something or invention that you say it was invented by the Fulani. So it's clear we know where their power is coming from. It is the same slave masters that provide them with the weapons. So here you see how they are saying how the people rushed and ate the um, girl that fell down. Your question should be, you have seen what a slave raid or razia looked like. How possible will it be that somebody will just be there? This is supposedly happening early in the morning because the raiding bands, which is the army you see today, that's why you see all the wars in Africa. If you noticed, the African presidents do not get anything useful from the Europeans and Americans other than military weapons that's all because that's the same slave raiding army what all they did was they just gave them uniforms but they still use them for the same purpose so now if you still believe that this is possible and that a large lump of yellow fat could have come out and human beings will rush no matter tell us how big the fat could have been no matter how you see it, just tell us how big. Imagine how big it could have been. Imagine whoever you know that is the fattest person you know on earth running and then they shoot the little musket or whatever they shot and then a large yellow fat exuded and then no sooner had she fallen than the Makarekas rushed upon her and in a crowd and seizing the fat, they tore it from the wound in handfuls. How big can that fat be from a girl? no matter how fat she is so imagine the type of fat she could have been and is able to run that a a musket needed to be shot in order to stop her now notice that they even said they divided her by cutting off the head and splitting the body with their lances used as knives to cutting longitudinally from between the legs along the spine to the neck do you know how long it will take them to do the spine cut through all straight through the spine in notice they said through the spine the lie is very easy to debunk so but well we challenge you to go and read these materials at least it will help you know how to identify the lies of the slave master the slave master is a liar remember if you think the slave trade has stopped one of the things you need to go research is why Abraham Lincoln was killed. At least you hear some people that they give you an account of how they committed a murder, even 50 or 100 years afterwards. Today, it is still very shady. That should tell you they don't want to do anything about it. You should go and research a bank called Freedman's Savings Bank, established by Lincoln with a mind to alleviate the suffering of the slaves after the emancipation so if you understand that the people did not support the emancipation you should understand that the cabal the group that are behind it are still working with that script whatever their reasons are which is unfortunate but just bear in mind that the video made in 2015 negroes in negro land is all full of lies all they are doing is to tell the lie as frequent as possible tell it often so that it will look like true these are all lies the reason if you check there are no real investments in sub-saharan africa other than their radio stations the reason they have those radio stations is to propagate lies it's for propaganda and takia that is why you have them and here we come to the end of this edition of negroes in negroland a reply part two 
We thank you very much for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research. Find time to also let us know where we have lied. Once again, thank you very much for listening. Peace.